What's going on guys and welcome back to a new video for those of you that are new to the channel. My name is Joshua Daniel George, a social media marketer and online coach. And in this video, you can watch me build the best lookalike audiences for your Facebook ads campaigns. No, I don't waste no time. Okay guys and welcome back to the video. So like I said in the introduction today we're going to be looking at the best lookalike audiences that you can use you know for your social media marketing campaigns whether that is for yourself or for your clients you know how to set it up and what is needed in order to set up a successful lookalike audience. Now, for those of you that uh, do have a pen and paper, I you know I've heard quite a lot of you guys taking notes on my videos, which I think is awesome. You know, I, I do uh, try and provide as much value as possible. And uh, for those that are actually taking notes, uh, the first thing I would write down is that the quality or the effectiveness of the lookalike audience does come from the source. And what I mean by that is that if you are going to create a lookalike audiences. Of, of someone that has, I don't know, seen your ad or someone that has been on the website, that is not going to be as effective as, for example, a lookalike audience of people that have purchased an item off your store in the past. So that is just something that you need to take into consideration and that, in my opinion, if you are going to create a lookalike audience, it needs to be of a very, you know, high quality source and there's no point in creating lookalike audiences just for the sake of it. Okay, so all the gurus that say to create a lookalike audience of, of people that have viewed content, people that have been on the website, etc. Just in my opinion, again, you know, this is just something that I think it's not uh, set in stone, but in my opinion, it is a bit of a waste of time and I would much, much rather just continue to you know test out different interests and different audiences rather than create look like audiences of something that is not of a very high quality so in my opinion the best lookalike audience, a bit of a spoiler here, um, I don't want to, you know, just make this video like 20 minutes long just for the sake of it, but in my opinion, the best lookalike audience for e-commerce, or to be fair, in any other, um, you know, any other store or anything like an info product where you have purchases is, of course, the customer list. So the list of people that have purchased of something of you previously, whether that is off your store, whether that is you know you're offering coaching or you know you've got an info product and the, you know that the customer list of that, so people that have purchased that item, that info product, that uh, product on your store, that service, that is going to be the highest quality audience. So if you can create a list out of that, then of course um, that will be a much higher quality list and a much higher quality lookalike audience than, like I said, website visitors or people that have seen your Facebook page in the last 180 days or anything like that, okay? So with that said, the customer list is what we need to upload into Facebook and from there we can create our lookalike audience. <clears throat> so as you can see here, I am in the sort of ads manager, if you will, and then in uh, the audiences. So of course, Facebook changed the layout every other day. But um, as, as it is now, go to business tools and then go to audiences within your business manager and you should get something like this. I just wanna quickly interrupt this video and basically mention to you guys that I have a free social media marketing course and you can literally download this course if you are subscribed to my YouTube channel. So basically what I've done is I have created a custom audience with Google Ads. Uh, for those of you that are subscribed to my channel and you guys will see a pre-roll advertisement on one of my videos where I basically give you the direct link to download this course. So it's an unpublished link on Teachable which you will only see if you are subscribed to my channel. So if you want a free social media marketing course, all you need to do is subscribe to my channel and then you will see my advertisements. So without further ado, let's hop back into the video. Now, if you already have audiences, this will look slightly different. So for example, this is one that I use for myself and for Lifestyle Design Mastery. And there are a few audiences here that I just wanna show you that are of bad quality and a few audiences that are of really good quality. So the email list is just a custom audience, which is everyone that is on my list is a relatively high quality um, you know, list because these people know who I am. And if I retarget those people, they are warmer than just random cold traffic. These lookalike audiences are of a bad quality because the people on my email list are not necessarily people that have purchased from me. 
okay? This could be anyone, could be someone that has opted in for the Facebook group, someone that has signed up for the free course, someone that has downloaded my Facebook, um, well, my Facebook, my, my ebook, my playbook, anything along those lines. So these are not necessarily people that have spent money on me or my products. So creating a lookalike audience off of that isn't really necessary because you're just gonna get more people that look like people that have got something for free and given their email address for in exchange. Okay, then the purchase list, as you can see here for June 2020, is an extremely high quality audience because it's it's relevant, it's up to date as well because it was just that one month. Um, again, I'm not gonna go into the details why I've got that specific audience, but um, this is an extremely high quality audience. Then website visitors in the last 180 days is a custom audience, no need to uh, create look like audience stuff like that. Again, Facebook engagement, Instagram engagement, Audience like that are not necessary to create lookalike audiences with. It's just a waste of time. We've got a lookalike audience of the email list. Again, this is something that I would not use for conversions. Look, uh, then we've got a custom audience purchase. So people that have purchased my uh, coaching. If I create a lookalike audience of this, that would be of a high quality um you know, it'd just be a high quality audience because these are people that have spent money on my coaching and then you tell them Facebook, okay, find more people that look like this list, you know, these people that have uh, spent um, good money on one or two of my products. And then again, we've got our email list, custom audience, pages list, custom audience, and then we've also got a checkout list, which um, is basically people that have checked out for my coaching, but haven't actually made that purchase just yet. I do not use, like, um, to be fair, I don't use most of these audiences. There are one or two that I use. Most of these are either me testing things out, me creating videos like this, me showing, for example, in the coaching group how to create these audiences and so on and so forth. So, for example, these 2 and 3% lookalike audiences are not audiences that I use. I've just created them for example purposes. Okay, so back to, because, you know, we've been digressing a bit here, back to the actual goal of this video is how to create a lookalike audience. Now, there are two ways to create a lookalike audience depending on what kind of clients uh, you've got. If you've got a client with an e-com store, Shopify store, WooCommerce, anything like that, then what you can also do, and just click on, click on create a custom audience here, is go to website, okay? And then what you're basically going to do is you're going to go or tell Facebook, look at this website, look at the pixel events, and then pick or create a custom audience based on these events. So if you click on website here, we'll get our pop-up. Brand Panier Pixel 2019 is basically the pixel that I want to use. So usually we tell our clients, have one pixel per website, uh, which to be fair usually is the case. If people have multiple stores, for example, stores in different countries and you want a complete different domain name, etc., then we usually say, okay, just have the one pixel on the one store, pixel two on store two and so on and so forth. In this case, um, due to you know, me getting stuff banned, I've actually had to create a new pixel. So 2020 is actually the pixel that I use nowadays. Why? Because 2019 is actually a pixel that I can't actually access. So uh, that is the reason for me doing that. So what we're now telling Facebook is we want Facebook to look at the brand Panier pixel. And then we only want to create a custom audience based off of, for example, leads for the agency. Let me just double check and see if there's a way for me to get the lifestyle design mastery um, page here because obviously that is the one with the purchases which unfortunately I cannot do because I haven't got a purchase pixel on the brand Panier store but uh, let, let's just you know hypothetically speaking say that we are running an e-com store and on that e-com store we've got the purchase event so the purchase pixel on the thank you page which only fires obviously if you hit the thank you page and you're only ever on the thank you page if you've made a purchase so let's say for example that in this case, lead is the pages, yeah? So if we had the pages pixel on the page or on that thank you page, then that is what we'd get. In this case, because we are not actually selling anything on the brand Panier store, it's a service that we are providing. We call that lead as opposed to pages. In the last 180 days, which as far as I know is actually the max, I don't think, yeah, okay, so the max is 180 days. So what we're now telling Facebook is we want a custom audience off of, leads so people that have hit that lead event on our page in the last 180 days we want facebook to make or bundle up a little audience of that and then we can give it a name bp i always start with our agency initials it's just an easy way for me to um you know 
separate the audiences that I've created as opposed to audiences that were previously created. We do take over a lot of stores that have worked with other agencies in the past, didn't get the results that they want, and then they basically come to us to actually do get the results and get better results, etc. And then we like to have our initials in the audience just so we know, okay, this is an audience that we have created. So BP, in this case, I'll probably do leads 180. Okay, and then I know, okay, these are uh, leads in the last 180 days that, you know, and I've created this audience, that is my agency. So create audience. What we could also do, if that is necessary, we could create an audience off of uh, people. So if we just quickly create audience, this is a quick side note, guys. Um, what we could do is, for example, let's say we have a video sales letter or anything like that, and the lead only fires as soon as they've filled out the questionnaire because they want to become a lead for our agency and complete registration only fires if they opt in for the video sales letter. So the flow would be advertisement to opt in page for the video sales letter, registration complete for the video sales letter, they watch the video sales letter, which is like a case study or a quick video on who we are as an agency. And then if they fill out the questionnaire at the end of the video sales letter, um, then the lead event would fire. What we could then do is create an audience of people that have completed the registration in the last 180 days, but exclude people that have become a lead in the last 180 days. And what we are now telling Facebook is, okay, we only want people that have opted in for that video sales letter, have, have may or may not have watched it, but have not become a lead. And then retarget those people with, for example, testimonials of happy clients, results that we've got for previous clients, or just a follow-up, um, getting them to, you know, with a call to action to get them to actually schedule a call with us. And then we can create an audience. Again, BP, um, this will be complete registration and then no lead and then 180. Okay, so now we've created two audiences here. Again, these will probably be quite small. As you can see here, the audience is, is populating. This could take two to three days. Um, so don't panic if you see pending and doesn't remove or anything like that. I think it actually says it, doesn't it? Audience size will be available in two to three days after its creation. So there you go. So we've now created two custom audiences. And yes, you know this video is about lookalike audiences, which is actually what comes next. So select lookalike audience. So go to create audience again, lookalike audience. And then we now select our lookalike audience source, which is always a custom audience. Okay, and then we can go to other sources and then here we can find those uh, leads that we created. So as you can see, all those custom audiences that we created. So we can now use BP leads and then leaders that I would not create a value-based lookalike. In my opinion, I've not had very good experience with it. Uh, we will get into that in just a second. Uh, basically value-based audience is if you create an audience based off the amount that that person has spent. Um, in this case, it's not really relevant. So select the audience location. So we can do, for example, United States. And then what we're now telling on Facebook is, okay, this is the audience that we like. This is the country that we like. Now find us an audience that looks one percent, like with a 99% accuracy, like this audience. Okay, so as you can see here, 2.4 million. Now, quick mention about the 2.4 million. That is because it, it basically 2.4 million is the 1%. So 1% of people in the US and then basically Facebook is going to find that 1% that looks most like, um, you know, our list of leads. So for example, if we do uh, the Netherlands, for example, which I think I think our, our, so our population is like 17 million, right, in the Netherlands. And I think our population on Facebook is around 11 million. So if we create a audience of 1%, that is 1% of 11 million. And that is basically how it works. As you can see, it's just over 100K. Um, so 114,000, yeah, so 114,000, sorry, I just, my maths, <laughs> I just uh, lost my head a bit there, but yeah, so that is 1% of the total audience in the Netherlands that is available, okay? So this not that does not necessarily have anything to do with the size of your, um, your custom audience. With the custom audience, what I would do is only create it if you've got, let's say, 100 events or more, so 100 purchases, 100 leads, only then, in my opinion, is it necessary to create a lookalike audience? Because if you've only got two purchases and you're telling Facebook, okay, we've got two people here, find more people like those two people, it's not gonna be as accurate, right? So only when you've got 100 purchases or 100 leads in this case, if you're doing it for a service-based business, is it relevant to create that lookalike audience? So 
Um, we'll just do the United States for now. There we go. Now this, uh, another mention, is strictly for e-com and info products. If you are working with a local business, because now we're basically targeting the whole of the US with this list. So we're selling Facebook. Okay, this is the people, the list of people that we like. This, you know, we want more people like this. We want you to find or go to the whole of the United States and find us the one percent that look most like our audience. But if we are working with a local business, for example, a local dentist, a local chiropractor, a local car dealership, then we don't want to be targeting the whole country because there's no point, right? Because the local, you know, there's, people aren't going to travel for miles and miles for a loaf of bread, are they? Or for miles and miles to go to their dentist, they just want to go to a dentist locally. So what I would then do, because obviously, you know, we don't want to um, be targeting the whole of the US in this case if we just work with a local business, what I would then do is go to 10%. And again, you know, for all the gurus to say, oh, no, you know, this, this is not what you should do. This is how I do it. This is what works for me. So for a local business, I always start with 10%. And I, even then, like to be fair, with a local business, I don't really use lookalike audiences all that often. If I would, because the audience, pop, like basically the population of the area that they are in is that small, I would go for 10%. Now, obviously, if you are targeting a larger country, let's say you're targeting Istanbul, for example, then yes, you can maybe make that audience a bit smaller. You don't need 10% of the entire um you know city okay so that's just a quick mention about that in this case we'll just do the one percent i think this might be too small because we don't really run a lot of lead generation ads um, but it has created so as you can see here a look like audience is below a thousand people so that means that within the audience of the the whole of the us there's less than a thousand people that look or have a one percent uh 99 accuracy is probably the best way to say it that look for 99% accurate, uh, like the audience that we've uploaded. Okay, so I hope that sort of makes sense. And that is how you do it if you want to use the pixel. And the downside of this is that only the purchases that are registered by the pixel that you have access to, you can now use. Let's say, for example, we have a client that has only just recently uploaded that pixel or you know pasted that pixel onto the website. Maybe they've got a new website with a new pixel. They've lost access to the old pixel. Like, for example, which is in my case, I'm using Brand Panier 2020, which is only eight months old. But I've also got the pixel 2019, which actually has all of the data from when I started. Let's say you know that is the case um, for your clients or maybe your business as well. Then what you can also do is upload a customer list into Facebook and tell Facebook to create a lookalike audience off of that, which might uh, for your clients or for yourself be a much larger audience and a higher quality audience than just using the pixel. So as you see, I've got a very, very simple example customer list here that I've just quickly created. Um, Joshua George has purchased on this um, fictional e-com store an item for $35. Then we have John Smith who has purchased an item for $74. And Jane Smith has purchased an item for $23. And this is also where that uh, value-based look like audience will come in. So uh, for those of you that did not really understand what I meant just then, I will explain that in just a second. So what I'll do is I'll download this as a comma separated values sheet, which is a CSV file. Usually, if you export your email list, if you export your customer list or anything like that, it will come in a CSV file, which is fine because that is actually what Facebook uh, prefers. So what we now do is create audience, custom audience again. That is what we start with. And then rather than selecting the website, what we're now going to do is select a customer list because we're now going to upload our own list into Facebook. So that is all fine. Just click on next value. So does your list include a column for customer value. In this case, yes, because we can see how much someone has purchased. So let's say, for example, we create an audience and we tell Facebook, okay, we only want people, uh, you, we only want you to create an audience off of people that have spent more than $30. Then it won't create a look like audience for Jane, but it will for, in this case, Joshua and John. If we tell Facebook, okay, we only want the top 10% of um you know we're going to create a look like audience off of the top 10 percent of spenders in this audience then it might actually only create a look like audience off of john and so on and so forth okay now why is this valuable for us because we can have those higher ROASs, right if we only target people that are most likely to spend 
on Facebook, etc., then you know we will probably get a higher conversion value. So that is why that is interesting and that is why that is relevant. Um, so in this case, we do have that. So I'll select yes. For a lot of the customer lists, so for example, email list, etc., you will probably select no, but in this case, I'll just select yes. So requirements for using, yeah, okay, that's fine. I accept you need to basically, you know, sign your life away, uh, sell your soul to Facebook, accept the terms and conditions, and then we need to upload the file, which is here. There we go. So select that, and then we can give our audience a name. So in this case, I'll just do again our initials, BP example, customer list, YouTube video. Just so I know that it's not actually an, an actual list. Click on next select value so as you can see it's basically taking the sheet and it's basically said or it's asking us now okay which column actually contains the values well obviously it's not going to be email it's going to be purchase value so this is the one we can select and as you can see facebook has registered okay one person has purchased something for 35 one person has purchased something for 74 and one person has purchased something for 23. now as you can see one is mapped which is the customer value and now facebook needs us to help out so what we can do is tell facebook that okay this is the list of first names this is the list of last names where is it surname in this case and then this is the list of email addresses and then what facebook is going to do now is we're basically uploading this into facebook and then facebook is going to find those email addresses in facebook and see if we can find that specific person and then target that person through facebook ads so we've now selected or uploaded that customer list and we can now create our lookalike audience. And as you can see, this is the exact same as what we've created uh, previously. So rather than selecting the pixel, in this case, we've just selected our, uh, our source, which is the list. And then we can select our location again. So we can do United States. And then we can select our audience, which is 1%. And then we create our audience. And then there we go. So we've got a lookalike audience of 1% in the US of our example customer list, which was the list that we just created. Okay, so this is how you create lookalike audiences. We start with a custom audience and then we create an audience off of that. We try and always do 1% because that is the highest quality version of a lookalike audience. For local businesses, that might be a very, very small audience. So then we do 10%. Okay, so now we know how to create a custom audience, a lookalike audience. And now I'm going to show you how to actually use that audience in your Facebook ads. So again, just a demo demonstration ad account here. I don't actually do anything with this. Um, conversions in this case, um, start with 10 euros a day. And then there we go. You can give the campaign a name, of course, but that is not what we're going to be doing today. Brand Pixel 2020, choose an event. We want more leads. And then here is where we select our custom audience, or in this case, look like audience. So we select it here and wait for it to load. There we go. So these are all the audiences that we've created, which you could see here as well. And then we want to select the lookalike audience of the customer list. Location, in this case, is the US. So there's no point in targeting the Netherlands. United States. And then what I would do is not do any further targeting. Do not change the ages. Do not change the genders. Because we've already got our best audience, which is that lookalike audience. We don't want to start... Um, excluding people in that audience because that is already the highest quality audience okay so do not do not add any additional features here we've had uh, and for example one of our clients has a customer list of people that are between the ages of 25 to 55 which was basically his highest quality audience and uh, we created the look like audience stuff like that and then he basically started to fill them or he wants us to start fill them with all of the ages and genders etc but the audience already was 25 to 55 so there's no point in telling Facebook to do that again here because we're only actually targeting people between 25 and 55. So do not mess with all of this, okay? Then automatic placements continue and you know you guys get the rest, okay? So that is how you create the lookalike audiences and then in this case, the highest quality and best lookalike audience. So hope you got something out of this. Hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below if you like this video and if you want to see more kind of like Facebook ads videos like this from my channel in the future. And if you did enjoy this video, then please leave this video a thumbs up. It really does help this channel grow. Subscribe to the channel for more and I'll see you guys in the next video.